Paxton, many of the people that seem to show up around workshops that you do seem to be people that have got some experience in healing. So one thing I'm curious about is in these times, what really is the job of a healer? The healer's first job is healer, heal thyself. There are many healers who know they have a healing gift and they study healing techniques like Reiki or others and <clears throat> find themselves stressed out, find themselves having difficulty wanting to go to the next session. The healer who believes that the client has a problem is going to suffer burnout. Healing is not a physical process. Healing is a mental and intuitive, a process of being connected with spirit. If we think about the master healers and how they did their healing, it's easy to see that they never bought into the problem that the client thought that they had. As I recall Jesus' work, if he ever had conversation with the person who came to him for healing, it was a simple question. It was, do you believe I can do this? And if they believed, they were healed. And if they did not believe, fine, have a nice life. I cannot violate your free will. <clears throat> so the healer sees in the patient, in the client, the divine image of perfection, of everything is okay just the way it is. <clears throat> and the job is to convey that to the mind of the client, as Eckhart Tolle suggests when we're doing healing work. Our job is to hold presence, not to commiserate. Commiserating with somebody, discussing their problem with them, perpetuates the problem. Holding presence is holding your connection with the infinite, your connection with spirit, <clears throat> And through your intuitive connection with your client, they will get that. Now, we can't violate anyone's free will. They will get it when they are open to getting it. I have known of cases when individuals thought they left a healing session that had no effect on them. And several days later would discover that they had been healed. Sometimes it takes time for a human being to allow spirit, guidance, the infinite, to come into their consciousness, to come into their awareness, so that the healing takes effect. I remember one of the stories you told about working for the airline and how people would just come into your office and sit there and magical things would happen to them doesn't seem like that was healing work you were doing. What was going on in that situation? This was a, a phase in my life. I had a, a phase which actually was quite extended, was like five months, where everything in my life began to work just perfectly. Uh, actually, no problems in any area, no financial problems. Uh, I drove a ancient car and for five months had no mechanical problems had no problems of any type. I was um, the uh, lead engineer, the fleet leader, on one of the airline's uh, fleets of aircraft. And during that five-month period, when I did almost no work whatsoever, I came to work and I talked to people, my fleet had the fewest problems of any fleet of any airline in North America. It was as if somebody else was in control. During this time period, <clears throat> my secretary, whom I occasionally talked metaphysics with, began to notice some interesting things. And she began to bring people to sit at my desk. 
Uh, she would never tell me why she was bringing them to sit at my desk. If I asked what they were doing there, she would say none of my business. Finally, after a few weeks of this, I cornered her and I said, you have to tell me what's going on. And she said something like, I don't remember the names, but she said something like, Sally came in this morning and sat at your desk for a few minutes. When she came in, she had a very bad cold. When she left, she had no cold at all. She said, last Tuesday, Bob sat at your desk for 15 minutes. This morning, he had a doctor's appointment, and the doctor said there was no sign of his cancer, complete remission. Now, I had no idea this was going on. I couldn't have been in control of it because I didn't even know what was happening. After this five-month period, I had a dream, auspicious dream, saying, you did not create this five-month period for yourself. We did it for you. We did it to show you what is possible for you to create within this lifetime. And then they said, we are going on vacation. And they went on vacation and my life fell apart. And it was up to me to recreate uh, what they had been doing for me uh, prior to that time. But it did show me that all things are possible without effort. Is that where we are headed, or was that just a demonstration for your personal education, do you think? When people get insights, get revelations, see miraculous things, it's never for them alone. Humanity is all the same. If one individual can do it, everybody can do it. So that was telling me what was coming in effect for humanity and for much of humanity within my lifespan. So that was the preview? That was a preview. Now we're in the shift. Now it's actually happening. Everybody who would listen to this knows somebody for whom miracles have occurred. And everybody listening to this has others that they know of who are going through just horrific experiences these days. And I can't help but wonder, in a situation like that, when someone comes to you and it just sounds like what they are dealing with is insurmountable, what then is the role of the healer? What then is the role of the, the counselor, the one who's uh, sought after? The choice is simple. You can believe that the problem is real or believe that miracles are natural. As the Course in Miracles says, miracles are natural. If miracles do not occur, then something has gone wrong. All we need to do is change our mind. It is a Course in Mind training. We are here to discover that, so far as three-dimensional time-space is concerned, mind creates reality. Holding in mind any divine thought, any prayer that you like, an image of a flower, a peaceful scene, is healing you, is healing the world. Very difficult for human beings to grasp that thoughts have any creative power. We were taught by authority figures as we were brought up on this planet that it's not thoughts that create things, it's hard work. And if you don't do hard work, you're not going to see any results. The opposite is the truth. All master teachers have talked about the simplicity, have talked about it's all about prayer, meditation, consciousness. It's not about doing anything. Then to kind of wrap up, let's really put the hay down where the cows can get it here. How does one look at the front page of any newspaper in America and still say, all is well. My favorite saying is, it's none of my business. What's going on on this planet is none of my business. That's God's business. I, if I can control my own thoughts, I'm doing really well. If we want to take on the problems of the world, that means we believe in the problems of the world. If we think we need to throw out the bad guys and put in the good guys, we are totally self-deluded. Anybody who sees a bad guy is creating the image of bad guys on the planet. 
It's all about what you think about, what you feel is what you are creating, and you are the divine, infinite, all-powerful creator. There is no case that you cannot bring peace to. There is no situation that you cannot bring healing to. We are aspects of God. We are agents of the divine. We enrolled in planet Earth at this time for a purpose, and that purpose was to demonstrate the healing power of consciousness over and above armies, military, governments, economies, anything. There is nothing that will not shift, A, when its time has come, and B, when somebody prays about it. Paxton Roby is on the web at notimeforkarma.com. Also, in 2012, you'll find his articles in Sedona Journal. And they're on the web, too, at sedonajournal.com.